Joining us now is Colin McGranahan. He's a retail analyst from San Francisco Bernstein. He's a Bloomberg Best analyst on retailers such as Bed Bath & Beyond. And he just published a research report that looks at the effect of e-commerce on what he calls the traditional brick of source physical retailers. Colin, good to have you here with us. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. I mean, is there going to be a point where, you know, the, the typical brick retailer, I mean, goes away? Well, that was really the uh, the heart of this research, to try to quantify and put some numbers around this, this trend that we're seeing, which is accelerating. And I think that the conclusion is somewhat surprising, that even taking what I would call aggressive assumptions about the growth of e-commerce, mm. you'll probably still see physical or store retail sales grow at a reasonable rate for the next 10 years. And is that because people just are not still used to going to buying things online? They always want to be able to touch and feel things, or are there other factors at play here? Yeah, we actually looked at 11 different factors that we think will influence what the ultimate level of penetration is by different category. So some categories, like consumer electronics, already 20% of consumer electronics are sold online. And it has a set of attributes that make it very appropriate. You're buying a set of specifications. It's a very high value to weight ratio. So you're sitting in your house and saying, I can just figure out everything I need about a TV, get it delivered to my house in two days. Other categories, like apparel, a little bit more difficult. And so we looked at these different attributes and, and from a bottoms up perspective, said how vulnerable are different categories to online penetration. What about, you know, the bigger ticket vehicles, Colin? I mean, I'm looking for a car right now. I'll probably narrow my choices down to a couple different dealerships online, and I'm doing, you know, 24, 48 hours of research in total online. Yeah. But I have to go to the actual dealer and see the thing before I spend yeah. thirty or $40,000 on a vehicle, right? Yeah. Autom automobile dealers and florists are a little bit different in that the transaction and all the research can be transacted online. But the actual physical nexus, having the car at the dealer, will continue to exist. Same with a flower shop. You might put your order in through Amazon, but the local florist is still the one that's going to have the flowers and deliver to your house. So, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So we have chain store sales coming out this week. You know, we've seen some mixed numbers over the past couple of months, but the one area of strength we've seen in all of these retailers is their online sales. So Macy's, for example, Urban Outfitters, all examples of companies that have had huge, huge online bumps. Is that going to continue? Yeah, I think what people don't realize is that of total online today, about 43% is for multi-channel retailers. It's the Macy's.com, it's the Best Buy.com. So about half of all online sales are done by f physical retailers that also have an online business as well. So and we think that will grow as well. Colin, who's most vulnerable here in your view? So the most vulnerable, it's not, it's not uh, too surprising. It's the books, it's the media, it's consumer electronics, it's office products. It's categories that have relatively low growth, high penetration already, and a set of attributes that make it very appropriate to online sales. Categories that are less vulnerable are the exact opposite of that. Grocery, some apparel retail, home improvement, et cetera. What about retailers that are very smart with their online strategy? I mean, I love you know, those that I can order online, but I can go to the store maybe in return, and it gives me that flexibility. Are those the ones that are really going to kind of stand out and yeah, do I really think well? All the physical retailers today are, are investing heavily in their ability to, to service their customers through multiple channels. And there's some advantages. If you buy it online, you get it home, you know, geez, it, it's not the right color, it doesn't mm -hmm. fit right. The convenience of being able to take that back to the store is a factor uh, that favors the multi-channel retailers over the pure play guys. So there's some reasons why the physical retailers aren't going away. We call them brick of but you know, they're, they're not the walking dead after all. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. All right, we're going to leave there. Colin, great stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you. Interesting research. And of course, our Sheila Domarajan.